Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Your Mortgage Process. I'm, of course, of your host, Greg Wareham. Thanks for joining us today. we got a great guest today. So, you know, I love being associated and knowing like-minded people. And Jackie Baker that we have today, welcome to the show, Jackie. Hi, Greg. Thanks for having me. It's so great to have you. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> so, so Jackie, she does an amazing show up in northern New Jersey that really now has some national exposure, and we'll get into it uh, in a few minutes. But before we get there, tell us about yourself, Jackie. How do you get into real estate? How do you get into uh, looking at online presence? Let's tell us about you. Okay. Well, thank you again for having me. So great to be here. Um, So how did I get into this? Well, I've been a real estate agent going on eight years. Um, I'm up in Bergen County. Um, That's my like primary area that I service. And so, like I said, I've been in real estate for almost eight years, and the YouTube channel started three, almost three and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And I saw a need where I needed to educate people, right? Because I would, you know, meet people at open houses or, you know, just people in the neighborhood, and everyone's like, everyone's like, how's the market? Or I would get, or somebody asked a question, you know, a friend of mine told me if I did this to my house, or if I made this kind of an update, if I, you know, or where is there a good place to live in Bergen County or right. in New Jersey? So I had seen other real estate agents across the country start get on the YouTube bandwagon. I'm like, you know what? Nobody's doing this in my area. Well, I think I want to, mm-hmm. I'm going to try it. I mean, since then I have had, there's, there's, there's been a couple of people who've gotten channels started, not really doing much with it anymore. Sure. So here I am almost three and a half years later. I think I have close to, I definitely have over 200 videos. I think almost maybe 300 now. I have over 300,000 views on With the channel. Thousands of followers. And yeah. So it's it's grown. And what I love about it is that people, when I hear from people and then they comment on the channel, they're they're appreciative of right. what I'm I'm sharing with them because they don't they don't know. And it's a lot of first timers. I mean, as you know, you you want to help your first time buyers sure. out. And a lot of uh, clients that I've acquired were first timers and they were watching me for a couple of months, mm-hmm. learn the process. And then by the time they call me, they're like, all right, we already know what to do. <laughs> That's I'm great. Like, all right. Awesome. So I didn't have to sit here and There's tell you. There's nothing better than, a more edu- than an educated buyer or lister. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Edu- educated client. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, so it's kind of taken off and, and now I'm doing my live streams once a week and Thank you so much for coming on last uh, Monday. It was so much fun. It I was just, fantastic. I know. I love it, it. It was great. We had people, there were people from different parts of the country asking questions. Yeah. The way that you run your show, very professional, very informational. Thank you. And it's very relatable. You're very nice. Yeah. Right? You, and it comes across on the air. <laughs> and, it does. And, and you was, well, you as well. I mean, you, that one guy was like, remember he commented? He goes, this, Jackie, this guy knows what he's talking about. I'm like, of course he does. Like, I'm, you know, I'm only going to have like smart, nice people on my show. So I well, appreciate the but, compliment. Yeah, Thank no, you. It, seriously. Um, but it's been, it's, it's been awesome. I got to back into this a little bit because a lot of people see a need, right? You're like, we, I have a need to educate. Yes. And then you look at it and say, hey, other people are doing successful live streams or podcasts or, or uh, social media stuff. But you looked at it, you see the need, and how, what's your first course of action with something like that? Like, how do you get it into production and then make it successful? So when I first started it, um, my cousin was just breaking into his, he started his own little uh, media company. He was doing videos, you know, um, you know, doing videos and photography. So I hired him um, to start the, he did like the first, I think I would say for the first few months, and then COVID hit. So we had to stop, you know, we stopped meeting mm-hmm. do, and then I started recording the videos myself and editing them myself. And by the way, my cousin was doing the editing too. So I was editing them myself and then I eventually said, you know what, I'm going to get an editor. I'm going to record these because I know how I want it to be as much. My cousin did an amazing job, mm-hmm. but as I, during COVID, you watch a lot of YouTube, sure. right? So I learned from other agents and just watching other creators. I'm like, you know what? This is the style I'm going for. So then I just transitioned to just sitting at my desk, giving you the facts, giving you information. And then the editor that I ended up hiring, um, she's just done a phenomenal job. That's great, Just with, Jackie. you know, bringing levity to it. Like she throws some really funny clips in there, which I love about her because, 
you know, let's face it, real estate can get boring when you not, talk about it. Not as it. boring as mortgage, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, I think it's a, I think they're neck right, and neck, neck, neck there, Greg. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's what I did. And the funny thing was a lot of real estate agents, you know, my fellow agents were just like, oh my God, how can you do that? Like I could never get in front of a camera. Like, right. you know what? I was nervous, but after a while, like, I just feel like I'm talking to a potential buyer or a potential seller. That's and, great. Yeah. It's almost therapeutic in a lot of ways because you get to connect with people. Totally. And help and educate them. Totally. Yeah. So yeah. now you start at day one and you have no followers, right? You just start doing the, yep. the yeah. podcast. Okay. Yeah. So we just started doing it and then it just grew. It just grew. I, I um, well, like I was sharing with you before, I ended up working with a, a YouTube coach last year and I learned ways to tweak the channel to make it better, to make it look better. And, sure. and it just, it's grown from there. How important was it to hire outside people to try and help you get through the process? Oh God. Like I wish I'd done it sooner. Okay. You know, I mean, like I said, I had my cousin in the beginning, but then, you know, when, when COVID, we started coming out of COVID, his work started getting more demanding. He was doing mm -hmm. bigger projects. So that's why I went and got my own editor and it, oh God, she's a lifesaver. She's a lifesaver. So I, you know, I spend several hours a week mm -hmm. just researching content, sure. trying to you know, figure out what, what am I going to talk about this week? And now it's twice a week because I have to figure out what I'm doing in my live streams. Right. And so I spend hours doing that. Then I'll record and then I send it off to her. She sends me back a work of art and how, we're off how much races. time does it take? Like, and I bring that because people want to dabble in it. You see people dabbling in it all the time. Oh, yeah. But no one's doing it with any type of consistency. What kind of time commitments associated it's with hours. it? It's hours. It's yeah. hours. So, and especially if you want to batch record, like some days I'll I'll try to get more than one recording in. Sure. That alone could probably take two hours or so, depending on, you know, how many takes I have to do or, you know, if I'm like, oh, I don't like how they came out and I got to re-record it. Right. But the t the most time consuming part, I would say, is com like researching mm -hmm. and coming up with the content. Right. You know, seeing what's trending out there. What are what's the latest in the housing market? What, and, and, you know, the housing market's like the topic of the day right. every day. Everybody's watching it. And it's it's trying to find the right content that's going to appeal to the masses and that people can relate to. And what now this past year, everybody was, as you know, was saying, oh, the market's crashing. And and so now the channel has spun into this now that the, the channel's called your dose of real estate reality, mm -hmm. because I'm as real as you're going to. I'm just I'm going to be real and honest with you. And I'm going to tell you how it is. Yeah. And. What was driving me crazy, I was seeing a lot of creators out there, and I'm not bashing anybody, but there are some people that capitalize on the negative, Yeah, right? I couldn't agree with you more. You see it all the time. Totally. Yeah. So they these people were putting out there, it's going to crash, um, housing prices are coming down, get ready for another 2008. And I'm sitting back, I'm like, that is so not happening. So right. I was putting the opposite out there. So last year I was putting up videos, the market is not crashing. Right. And here is why, <laughs> you know. And people were commenting, they're like, thank you for being so real yeah. about this because it, it, that's all you hear about. And we were, we were chatting about that as far as the market not crashing. And the reality is, you know, there's not a rating company out there right now that thinks this market's going to crash. Right. Nobody. No. You know, it's anywhere from a little bit of appreciation to as much as some projections of a 10% decrease. But the reality is we're not even going to see that much this year. No. You're going to see some fluctuation. Right. And, you know, it's funny we bring this up now. I had a comment last night on um, the video I, I just put out on Wednesday, and it was about bidding wars coming back. Mm -hmm. and, this, and it was from an agent in Florida and he said, like, well, here's my thought on this. Um, inventory is going to increase because people who bought a couple of years ago aren't going to be able to afford the rising insurance cost and the taxes, and there's going to be short sales. I'm like, <laughs> where are you getting yeah. that from? You see what I mean? It's, it's a fear mongering. Yes. No question about but it. But I'm like, I'm like, you're a real estate agent. How could you not? How could you say that? Right. So, uh, Yeah. You know, it's funny. So I was reading, you know, what's the, so interest rates are down a little bit after the Federal Reserve, yep. and we'll chat about that in a little bit. But 
what seems to be the underlying theme is when interest rates get to five and a half percent, which they're getting pretty close to that right now. Yeah. That's the point at which people that have a house right now that are step up buyers will then consider listing their house because they feel like they can get a fair deal on what they're looking to purchase. Right. Yep. I agree with that. And the other thing that people have so much equity in their house right now too. So if they sell, they're going to make a lot of money. That's a great point. Right. Yeah. They're going to, so you're going to walk away with a lot more cash in your pocket and you may not have to borrow as much. You do you have more money to put down on the next place. You know, that's a fantastic point because yeah. we have all that appreciation. So now you've gained another 150,000 in exactly. equity, right? So that next mortgage you're taking out, yeah, it's at a higher interest rate, but you're not going to borrow as much. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes, makes sense. And you can yeah. see a trend in that way. Yeah, totally. I hope, but I hope people will think that way. I yeah. think the sellers are still, they're still apprehensive. You know, and a lot of it's just stability. You know, yes. once we have stable market conditions all, across the board, right? You get stable yeah. stock market, you get stable interest rates, you have a balance in buyers and sellers, right? Yes. I think that it, only good things are going to come out of that. Absolutely. You know, get this market a little bit back to normal. Yes. Now, your area of expertise is Bergen County. Yes. So what are you seeing in that market? Oh, God. <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, um, it depends. Depends on the town. But mm -hmm. overall, um, it's pretty strong. It's still pretty yeah. strong. Even, uh, I mean, even when the thing, when the interest rates were up last year, we did see a lull. Uh, things slow down. But as soon as, you know, once we hit that peak of 7%, right, it was like right. crickets. We didn't have any, I had like no business. As soon as that rate came back down, bidding wars like, like it mm. was earlier in 22. Wow. I could not believe, like, I'll never forget this. In November, right before Thanksgiving, I have mm -hmm. an investor that I, I helped them buy a lot of houses. She wanted to put an offer on this place. And it literally, it was two days before Thanksgiving. And and that's when the rates had just come back down. Right. I called up the listing agent and said, hey, I'm going to put an offer in. Um, just want to know, do you have any activity? He goes, yeah, we have 14 offers. Wow. I'm like, what? Like we're back, we're back. Are we back in, you know, January, February of 22? Like that's what it felt mm -hmm. like. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And now since the rates came back down even more, just in the past few weeks, we are back to like lines out the door to open houses, right? Uh, multiple offer situations. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, we're back. I'm like, I feel like it's, it, it didn't end. Right. You know, like where some markets, like Phoenix and Austin, they're seeing the price reductions. Mm -hmm. You know, they're seeing things totally shift. Where Bergen County, it's unique. And even down here in Monmouth County, yeah. like it, we're unique because of, we're so close to New York City. Right. And I don't think we're ever going to take a big hit because yeah. of that, because so many people want to leave the city. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I don't yeah. think we're going to see much price volatility no. at all in our marketplace. No. It's we just have an unlimited, we have a nine, we have millions and millions of people yep. from a demand standpoint coming from the city and in the surrounding areas. Yeah. It's just so densely concentrated yep. and even more so in Bergen County. Yes. Uh, Monmouth County has got concentration, but up there, it's just a lot. Oh, it's a, a lot, lot of people. Yep. And even if you go to um, like parts of Essex, Hudson County, I have a client who is looking to buy an investment property in Hudson. As soon as we call about the house, it's gone. Right. You know, it. It's crazy, but it's, I just don't think it's ever going to get affected to the point like these other markets. It's just because we have the New York city factor, you know? Yeah. And it's just a different market. You know, people get embedded in their brain, this 2008, nine, 10, 11, you know, recession, right? The mm -hmm. great recession. And you see the housing values drop so significantly. What people fail to realize is that was strictly a supply and demand issue. Right. That's all it was. Builders right. are building it epic proportions and one day the buyers go away and there's a ton of inventory and yep. that's what drops prices. Right. Right. And then people also went to foreclosure, unfortunately, because yeah. of the, uh, you know, the interest only loans sure. like that, that didn't help either. No, no, it's, <laughs> so, great. it's a great point. But, yeah. um, yeah, it, it's, so what we're in right now, it's so, it's so not 2008. It's, it's just, just not. not. We got a 4 not. million unit housing shortage yes. nationally right now. Yep. And the, I, I was reading that the past 10 years is the lowest amount of new construction that we've seen in this country since the 1960s. Yes. So, and the builders are afraid because yeah. they got burned in, two, in 2008, 9, and 10. Well, 
I just I did a video or a live stream about this a couple of weeks ago where builders are now building apartment buildings. They're building multi-unit okay. buildings because now they feel people can't afford a house. They're going to yeah. offer rentals. Yep. And and then you have investors buying up homes that are turning around and renting them out. And I won't don't even get me started on that because that that has me so well aggravated. The, so the government's incenting that now. So the government with the housing shortage has went to the local municipalities and basically I say incent, which is you don't get penalized if you open up your zoning to do more, more multifamily properties. Right. So you see it in Princeton right now. So Princeton now there's a lot of two families going on. Really? Well, historically, that wasn't a product in the Princeton marketplace. Oh, I didn't know that. So, oh. I, you know, I forget the, the name of the plan that Biden calls it. But it, anyway, they rolled out a plan to incent new zoning. Wow. For multifamily homes. Interesting. And to your point about builders, right? So if you're a builder, there's less risk in the rental market. Right. You know, with rents being so high, you know you're going to fill them. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So that's uh, that has me concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, see, reading about that, I'm like, oh my God, are we tend are, are we all just going to be renting? You know, that it just get, we're just producing renters now, and you know. Like they're discouraging home ownership. Yeah. And that's where I think we'll see some things change politically over the course of time. Mm -hmm. Because you can't have, you got all these hedge funds coming in and buying property. Right. You know, they're, I mean, in a huge clip. And it's like, at what point you can't have entities just control the market from a rental standpoint. Right. Right. It's just, it warps the whole market. It does. So, you know, hopefully we'll see some changes there over the course of time. Hopefully. Hopefully. So... So what else in Bergen County? So we got a, still got a high demand on those. Are, are there any sweet spots that people may want to look at uh, to have something relatively affordable? Um, well, let's see. You know, there's towns such as like Wyckoff, um, mm. Oakland. Oakland's like bo it borders Pasea County, so it's a little further west. Okay. Um, that's becoming, that became more popular during the, this whole crisis we're in right now the mm -hmm. affordability crisis because the homes were cheap at one point they're getting more expensive now but it's still more affordable sure. like where you can get like you can get a decent house between five six hundred thousand dollars there you go that's um, reasonable it is but i know right it's reasonable so it's you crazy, talk right? to other people in the country like five hundred thousand dollars <laughs> right. i'm like yeah but you know towns like ridgewood ridgewood is a hot market you cannot touch ridgewood right it's it, like bidding wars it's super it's gotten so super expensive and it's just such a popular town right everybody like especially people from the city they just and now ridgewood is that by hohokus yes okay i got married in hohokus <gasps> did you i got married at the hohokus inn we oh, actually had the ceremony. Did you there. really? I did. Oh, it's such a great place. I haven't been there in a while, but well, what I learned when I was there, so there were literally ten people at my at my wedding. It was like my parents, brothers, and sisters. And yeah. that was it. We were going to have a big wedding. And we're like, eh. you know, it's not, I'm not yeah. big into that type of type of thing. So anyway, so we get married at the Hohokus Inn. And apparently, there's a special chair in there that Richard Nixon used to sit in. That's oh, in the corner. I didn't know that. Yep, that's the Richard Nixon chair. Oh, <laughs> very cool. You know, he lived in Park Ridge. I didn't know that. Yes, so now it makes that's total why. sense. Yep. Yep. All right. That was like his favorite place to eat. That's so funny. I'll oh, see. Now, next time I go, I'm going to have to ask about that. <laughs> Can I see Richard's? <laughs> see if you can sit in it. I, I'm going to, yeah. Matter of fact, you should do a show from Richard Nixon's chair. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> totally. How about you do it with me? I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> when we hit the road, we'll uh, we'll stop in. We'll show everybody the chair. Absolutely. We gotta, yeah, we got to go look at the chair. Absolutely. You, yeah. Let's let's just report from the chair. It'd be great. Oh, yeah, can be you fantastic. imagine be a new show? Right. Report. We can plug Richard Nixon. We can tag him. We can do all sorts so of things. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, what are you seeing? Do you see a lot of first time home buyers right now in your marketplace? Yes. Okay. Um, for the majority of my sales last year, they were, uh, yeah, they were first timers. I have one, uh, one of my clients right now, they're downsizing. They're actually, uh, we're under contract at a house in Rivervale. Um, beautiful house they're getting, by the way. I love, this is like one of my favorite houses. But um, they uh, sold their house in New York last year mm -hmm. and they've been renting in Jersey and now they're, you know, they're, they downsize. It's like a ranch, you know, okay. one, one level um, but it's, yeah, that's it. But it's, it's my first timers, my, my millennial first timers. Yeah. I love my millennials. 
You know what? They're great in such pent up demand. And I know we've spoken about it on the on the show before. Yeah. It's it's that's the demand right now, right? Yes. Because everybody got termed out of the market. Yep. And it's the biggest demographic ever. Yes, it is. It's yep. huge. Bigger than the baby boomers. Yes. From a headcount standpoint. I mean, think they're of- never on time, by the way. Uh, Nick's a millennial, and uh, they, they have to get some time management <laughs> skills. So true. Sorry, so true. I apologize. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> Sorry. You have, you have our group because we fell for the, hey, everybody needs to go to college. And then uh, uh, sorry about that. Everyone's uh, you know paying back loans and living with mom longer. Well, know, we should have yeah. all been like electricians and plumbers and carpenters because yeah. such a demand for it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Look what happened. Now there's a shortage of that, right? And it's so funny because it, I think we're the first generation, Jackie, where that really became a big push. Yeah. Right? Where go to go to school. Parents probably didn't go to school. Yeah, and, my parents didn't, and yeah. they were like, "Oh, you're going to college," and it's like I got a business degree, and you know. Yeah. And would that get you? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Same. I used to think I didn't know what I was going to do when I got out of college. Yeah, same. I had no idea. Like, I just they were just like, no, you're going. I'm like, okay. Right. I'll just figure it out. Oh, gosh. Who's who's the, uh, it's the religious group in the Pencil- in Pennsylvania. The Amish. The Amish, yes. Yes. Oh, with the, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah you got to go out. Yeah, go yep. out and see the world before you commit to the Amish life like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. There was a reality show about that. Was there? Yes. So these I forget what it was called, but um, yeah, they 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 document these kids leaving the Amish, Amish community and going out in the real world and like yeah, see who comes back. Who a little, yeah, right, going a little too crazy, you know? <laughs> like, can you imagine? <laughs> uh, I love the name Rumspringer. <laughs> I think that we really need to consider your son changing the name of his band to that. So Jackie's got a very successful yeah. musician in the family. <laughs> Went to Berkeley, I, I, yeah. like big time. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I'll tell him that. I don't know if that's going to fly. <laughs> What's the name of his band? Among the Stars. Among the Stars. Yeah, they, they have uh, the run all streaming platforms, and uh, they're trying to make it big. They're all Berkeley kids. That's um, great. Yeah, like super, super talented. That makes him wicked smart, too. A very wicked smart. Yeah. I can't believe he's still living up there among the, uh, the I don't I don't want to say the, the mouse holes, that's what we call them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Compliment accepted. So I grew up in Massachusetts. <laughs> I know, <right>? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's it is like so to true, say. though. I know. I remember when my when my wife is from New Jersey originally, and she moved up to live with me. And she was like, "Why is everybody so rude?" I was like, "What are you talking about?" She's like, "Everybody's rude everywhere I go." Yeah, it's it, it it's so true. Because my son experienced that being in Boston and going to school. He's like. What's wrong with everybody up here? <laughs> They're nasty. And I'm like, and people say New Jersey, uh, New Jersey people have attitude. Oh no! I found New Jersey people very nice. Oh, very nice. Still find them, yeah. Very, very nice. Uh, yeah, my my son actually he likes coming back home now. When he comes back to visit. We're like, how are things up up north, up in Boston? He's like, eh. The biggest right. acclamation, though, to come down here driving were jug handles. Yes. Because you could take a left anywhere in Massachusetts. Yep. Yeah, you can't do that. I got a great story that I'll get off the topic. So we moved down. <laughs> we moved from Massachusetts. So my wife's from New Jersey. She moved with me in Massachusetts. I met her in the mortgage industry. I've been in the industry since 98. She was an appraiser down okay. here. And anyway, uh, we fell in love. She moves up there and we relocate down here. So when I relocate down here, I show up at the DMV to say, hey, I need a New Jersey license. I hand them my old license. They go, well, we can't just give you a license. So what do you mean? You have to take the written test. I was like, Okay. So I'll take the written, I set an appointment to take the written test. Right. And I sit down with the other 15 year olds <laughs> that are taking the written test. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of like build this little uh, uh, network of 15 and 16 year olds oh taking the God. test. I'm like, How'd you do? They're like, yeah, we got a B. I uh, failed. I was like one out of the, you know, 10 oh people and then it failed God. the written test. It was the jug handles that threw you off. And the whole thing threw yeah. me off. I didn't know. <laughs> I mean, that's how those tests are hard. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I had to retake the test. And I remember going up to the person behind the counter. I was like, well, give me my license back. Because they took it. They're like, I'll take the test. We'll get you a New Jersey license. I'm like, well, you have to give it back to me. Yeah. 
So they did give it okay, back to me. Okay, I was going to say, they, I hope they give it back to you. I passed the second time. Oh, good. Right? I studied right. really, See? really, really well. Awesome. Good. <laughs> so, good for you. So we're going to go to a quick break. Okay. Uh, Greg Wareham, Jackie Baker, we'll be back with you in two minutes. And then we'll start, let's talk, we'll talk about the economy a little sure. bit and shift gears. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. So hello, everybody, and welcome back to Your Mortgage Process. I'm, of course, Greg Wareham. We have Jackie Baker here today. Hello. So Jackie, we were talking a little bit before I zoomed off on a tangent about what a poor driver I am. We were talking a little bit about the millennial marketplace, yeah. which really is a kind of the first-time homebuyer market. Yep. What does a first-time homebuyer need to know? Uh, the first thing they, they need to do is speak with a mortgage lender. That's such a great idea. Got to get pre-approved. Right. Because it, I see it so many times where people will call me and they're like, uh, you know, I really like this house. My credit score is this. I have a credit score right. of 720. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, but are you pre-approved? Have you talked to a lender? Right. Well, no, but I know my credit's good. I go, I'm sure your credit is great, mm -hmm. but you got to speak to a lender. What, will you even take them out? No. Okay. No, definitely not. Like you don't you, you don't give them a freebie or anything like that. No, okay. I did in the beginning, like when I first got into the business, you okay. know. But then I learned. Right. Um, so I, I, they reach out to me, I'm like talk to lender first, get back to me and let me get, send me your pre-approval and then we'll go hit the ground running. Yeah. You know, and it's funny with that. I was just, I was on a call before we came in here and it was about a first time home buyer, self-employed that originally had an approval from a big bank, the pre-approval. Right. So the agent, you know, called me and said, hey, listen, can you take a look at this, see if they qualify? So I have them send me all their tax returns. Well, they don't qualify. You know, but we can put them on a plan to get them where they need to be. They're just not showing enough money. So then they tried to leverage the big bank. They tried to le leverage. And, hey, we got this pre-approval from a big bank. Agent reaches out to their mortgage person. Mortgage person says, well, I haven't reviewed their income yet. They send their income. They don't qualify. Now they went on to another bank to try to go through the same process in – there's no magic sauce to it. Mm -hmm. You kind of qualify or you don't qualify. So it's absolutely critical that you talk to somebody. A absolutely. And that's one of the nuances in the industry that, that are really, really important. Right. right? So when we pull, so like I, cause I get a lot of times people do not want their credit pulled yet. And what I say to them is, listen, if we pull your credit, your credit report's good for 120 days. Generally speaking, it's going to be good for 120 days. Right. That means from the time I pull it, you have to close on a house in 120 days. Yep. Worst case scenario, we have to re-pull it after 120 days. But the, the bigger advantage there is if you have someone that might be in a, have marginal credit, it gives us the opportunity to fix the problems up front. Yes. Because if you're working with a really good mortgage person, they run everyone through what you'd consider a credit analyzer. Yep. And the agencies will come back and tell you, this is specifically what you need to do to get your credit score up. Yep. And to, to your point with it, Jackie, it could be the difference between FHA or conventional. It can have big swings in interest rate as well. Yes. Yeah, so kind of doing that diligence. Right. So it's so now with my client, now she's going to go conventional. The rate is higher, but now she's avoiding the PMI and and the other um, right. upfront costs with FHA. Right. So it you makes know, sense. It totally makes sense. Yeah. If yeah. you have good credit, conventional always makes more sense. Yes. You oh, know, yeah. And you see a lot of it in the industry that where people pre approve people as an FHA loan. And I look at them, I go, well, why did they do it FHA? And you know, a lot of times those people qualify conventional. I'm not going to get into the down and dirty behind the scenes in the in the industry, mm -hmm. but FHA is a more profitable product than a conventional mortgage. Is. Uh -huh. Now, I'm not saying that influences anybody's comp. I just know the math behind the scenes. Gotcha. So, but conventional is always better if you get really good credit. Yep. And you qualify for it. Right. So as a first time home buyer, all right, they've seen their, they've spoken to the lender, we've issued the pre-approval. What else do they need to know when they're out there shopping for a house? What else do they need to know? Well, they have to, the other thing I, I, I try to be upfront about everything, but the, and, and I'm sure the lender uh, explains to them as well. They also have to have money to the side to cover the closing costs. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They also need enough money to cover the, their inspections. You know, because inspections can get costly depending on what you're going to do. So right. if, if you're going to go, you have to do a radon test, your standard home inspection, you need septic inspection, um, oil tank sweep, right. like all that stuff. It adds up. Sure. Um, so you, what else do they need to know? They they need to know they got to walk into a house and just like with a, an open mind. Right. Right. That's a, that's like, a, no, but that's yeah. a good point though, going in with an open mind, because I, I don't know that people really know what they want until they see it. Exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah. So as much as like, and I get this a lot where people will do like, oh, I want a four bedroom colonial. Yep. And then we'll happen to just come across a split level, which believe it or not, I used to hate split levels. Now I kind of like them because I like right. the ability to be able to expand on them and like put an addition on and make, make the kitchen and living space larger. It's like yep. there's, it has a lot of potential, mm -hmm. right? And that, that in of itself, like will people walk in and say, oh, you know what? This would work better for us because it's less stairs going up. Like when you walk into a split, you go up a flight of stairs, there's a living space, and you go up a small flight of stairs to go to the bedrooms. You know, right. like, oh, you know what? This would work better for our kids, you know? Right. And then I had another family, young family, millennials last year. Mm -hmm. They ended up buying a ranch, which they never expected that because they were all like, I want a colonial. I want a four-bedroom colonial. And that's, you know, that that's that's what they all envisioned. Center hall, the South. Center colonial. Hall, colonials. Yeah. And then we walked into a ranch and they were like, this is great because our three kids were, were all on the same floor. Like they didn't, they yeah. never thought about that until they were in it. And they're like, this is perfect. You know, we don't have to worry about running up and down the stairs for the kids. And um, so, yeah, was, that was, so keep an open mind. That's, that's why I'm. You hit the you nail gotta, on the head with that. You really yeah. do because you, you don't know what you want. No, you don't. you know what you want. Exactly. It, it's so <laughs> right? true. It's so yeah. true. Um, you know, and of course, when I, when I take people, when I take my clients to the houses, I mean, I'm very, you, you, you can tell by talking to me how, but like, I'm going to tell you how it is. Yeah. You're very honest. I'm very, I'm like honest to a fault because yeah. like sometimes I'll walk into a house and they'll be like, oh, well, this is nice. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, you have this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. Right. The location's terrible. Or even before we go look at the house, they'll send me a house that like, oh, can we look at this? And I'll go as far as go on Google Maps mm -hmm. to see where it's located. If it's on a double yellow, uh, double yellow line on a busy road, um, make sure there's it's not in a flood zone. It doesn't right. back up to any water. That like... These are things they're not thinking about. And these are the things that they do not see online. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's my job to like dig deeper and look right. at the flood maps and look at the like the exact location. And then I'll reach back out to them and say, okay, this is what I see with this property. It's a nice house, but mm -hmm. you have a brook behind the property. Right. You know, um, is that going to be an issue for you? You know, is this location going to be an issue for you? You know, the, the property backs up to say, an industrial area or, you know, it backs up to a parking lot of a shopping center or sure. something like that. So these are these are things that that's my job, and I'll tell them. And, and the first thing I say to them, it's like, you got to think about the resale. Right. You may love this house, but you can't change the location. Uh, so great, if your location's advice. not right. good, think about when you go to sell it down the road, and especially if it's a house that's been sitting on the market for a while. Mm -hmm. And I tell them that's why it's sitting on the market, right? Because people don't want to deal with that. So if you take the, you buy this, you're gonna have the same issue. Yeah, so it, you you really have to look at all the business aspects of it, right? You do. The probability is you're not going to be in that house for the rest of your life, even though it feels that way when you right. come in. You're like, yeah. this is perfect for us. But you, you you just never know. Like when we bought our first house, we were in it for 14 years before we sold it. We thought we were gonna live there forever. Like right. we were gonna, the, you know, the kids are gonna come home with their kids and, you know, we were going to have grandkids there. I'm like, no, I, it's, you just don't know. And you got to think about that. Right. So I, I remember my first house. I knew I wasn't going to live there for very long. Yeah. So I had a house. I, I lived in Sussex County. That's oh, why I said, oh, when okay. you go to Sussex County, I'm like, oh, okay, I live there. <laughs> and then I learned really quickly that A, there's bear there, but that's a whole other story. And oh, they, we had bear up by where I live too. You, you got up, they, I had to fight with them with the garbage. Oh. Like I had to put the garbage did out that really? morning. I did. Ooh. And bears don't get into garbage like raccoons do. Bears destroy the garbage. Oh, yeah. They shred everything. Oh, yeah. So it was a, a big cleanup. And that the house that we had purchased up there, it had a flat roof on it, which I regretted. So oh. all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a little bit of a tangent here. So we, we buy this house. It's got a flat roof. Yeah. And I just moved down here from, from New England. And there was no air conditioning in the house. And so we get air conditioning put in because it would get like 110 degrees in there during the summertime. So, all right, we're going to get air conditioning. They have to put the unit on the roof. So when they're done with everything, the unit they put on the roof looked like the lunar module that they put, put on. Oh, like clearly God. the people I hired, uh, you got to shop around and don't always go with the cheapest price. And it's another no. <laughs> side story. Didn't anybody tell you that? Come on. I know. I know. <laughs> I didn't listen. I didn't have any money. All right. <laughs> So, so they put it on the house and I'm looking at it saying, you know, I wonder if that's going to leak where they cut in, make a long story short on it. The first rainfall, 
I mean, the water poured into the house. Ugh. Oh, it did like seventy five thousand dollars worth of damage. Oh it was my covered by insurance, God! But, but oh, it was awful. It was Ugh. awful. So anyway, this is why you got to work. And my, I didn't trust my real estate agent, and I knew better. She was selling me on it, selling me on it. Ugh. And I was like, you know, I was in my, you know, I was twenty nine maybe at the yeah. time. Yep. And you know, I wasn't as smart as twenty nine year olds are today in a lot of ways. And I was oh, just yeah. like, oh, if you say so, you know, I trust you. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, it wasn't a good fit. Yep. See that, and that happens. And that it's there, there are still some real estate agents out there today that'll just sell you. They just want to sell you the house where, and, and that's what I tell my clients. Like, I'm not here to sell you. I'm right. not, I'm not going to sell you the house. You have to love it. And I'm going to help you get it. Right. Like if this is, if this is the right thing for you. Um, but too many agents do that. So not quick, another story. So I, I had these, uh, Millennials, these buyers that I had, um, they closed in December. They bought a beautiful house in Morristown mm -hmm. and they fired their other agents. So they were under contract on another, on another home. There was a ton of issues, probably like $50,000 worth of work that needed to be done. It's a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. And they were like, we just felt like our agent didn't really fight for us. You know, just mm -hmm. like we went back and forth, you know, the between the attorneys and, um, we just felt like he didn't support us. And so they found me on mm -hmm. YouTube and I, we, I went out with them on day one, we found the house, put the offer in and got it. But what her, the, their biggest thing was, it's like, we just want to make sure we feel supported mm -hmm. and you're not, not selling. So the day we went to look at that, the day we found that house, we looked at maybe three or four other properties Oh dear God! Like I, you know, I told you how like I, I'm honest when I walk into a house. Right. The wife turned to me. She goes, "I so appreciate you telling us, you know, your thoughts on the house." She said, "The last guy we were with, all he would do is try to tell, make it look great. Like, right. oh, but look at the potential here. You could do this and you can do that." And and she's like, "You know, we're looking at these crap houses, and he's making it like, right? You know, I, we have to buy this house, right?" And I said, that's not what we're really supposed to be doing. Like, no. I can't tell you what to buy. I'm here to help you. Educate. Yeah, educate help you. you organize and, your thoughts as to what right. you want and, what you need. Right. right. And I'm going to point out the negatives. Right. You know, I'm going to, if I see things, I mean, like, you got to look out for this and, you know, uh, whatever. Like I was saying before, like, look at your location. You can't change that. You know, and I, I make them think about it as much as so if they fall in love with the place. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I, you know, I got to point out the negatives yeah, too. You got to, you got to make it, you got, because they're going to regret it. Right. You know, they will absolutely regret it. You know, and it's not like buying a TV where like a no. salesperson sold me on this thing. I mean, this is going to be statistically your biggest investment yes. ever. Yeah. Absolutely. It's big money on the line. Yeah. So you got to be happy with it, or at least you need to understand what you're getting into. Exactly. You know? Yep. It was, especially if there's issues with the house and, you, you know, understanding the maintenance of it too. Right. You know, there are, you know, people who uh, have purchased homes with septic tanks and right. they, oh my God, it's septic tank, you know, and we just walk them through. It's like, you got to have it, you know, got to have it emptied. You got to have it serviced once a year. You know, they don't, they don't understand like what goes, what's involved right. with maintaining a home and like those extra things thrown in there. Like, oh my God, I didn't think about that when I have a septic tank, like they have to do all these things. Um, but, and I'll tell them if that's not your thing, if you're not a handy person or if right. you're not, you're not going to want to deal with that, that's not the right house. Let's find one that will meet, right. you know, that's going to fit you. So yeah, yeah. And making sure that you understand again, all the nuances of the house I, yeah. and you're working with the right home inspector, you know, someone who's trustworthy yep. to, to look at it. I know when I purchased my first house, he was maybe like my age and not that that was a bad thing, Yeah, but he kind of, he... He just breezed through everything. Just make a long story short, within yeah. two weeks, the boiler broke. Right. And he said, oh, this thing's great. Well, the thing was like, it was like 30 years old. Yeah. I just didn't know. Right. Yep. Uh, septic had an issue. It was really a nightmare. Yeah. And oh, God. It's just I wasn't working with the right people is my so point. That's okay. Doesn't thing. make them bad. They just weren't right for they me. Were, exactly. And so. that's the thing. And if you got to go out, like I tell people who come, they come talk to me. And I'll tell them, go talk to other real estate agents. Don't just like, mm -hmm. you know, don't don't just choose me because of, you know, you, how you found me. Yeah. You know, we may not be the right fit or I may not find you to be the right fit. You yeah. know what I mean? There are certain people I'm like, yeah, 
we're it's not going to we're not going to jive. We're you not know, gonna and work. it's a really it's a unique relationship as a real estate agent. It's a closeness that you have with your clients. Yeah, because you're going through. I mean, you're going through where their bedroom's going to be and where the yep. bathroom's going to be. Like it's just a more intimate process. It's actually from a sales standpoint, it's probably the most intimate of relationships working with someone looking to buy or yeah. sell a house because yeah. it's so personal to them. It is. Where a yeah. car's not as personal. And I'm not comparing the profession so much as just it's really, it's yeah. intimate. Yeah. And then, you know, if they have kids, you know, you get to know the kids yeah. and you got to think about like, you know, the a couple that I'm working with now, we're closing um, the end of the month. Uh, they're expecting their second child. And like any day now, she's mm -hmm. due. And when we were looking at homes, you know, I would to point out to them, it's like, okay, so do you want both girls staying in this, in one room, or are we going to like, you know, you're going to split it up, you know, cause they, like we went to a, we walk into a house where three that you would have like two bedrooms upstairs and one downstairs or something, you know? And like, right. and I would say to them, I don't think this is going to work for you mm -hmm. unless you want both girls in, in the same room. And they're like, oh yeah, we didn't think about that. <laughs> you know, like yeah. as a mom, you yep. know, that's the other thing too. I, and I'll share stories with them, like about my own kids. I'm sure. like, I go, all right, can I be honest with you? You know, because they were like, oh, we can redo the bathroom and we'll make it really nice. I go, can I be honest with you? Don't touch that bathroom till the kids are much older because they're going to destroy it. <laughs> and advice. they're like, what do you mean? With the really? I'm like, no, trust me. Yeah. No, <laughs> Just, kids wreck everything. They do. They do. They the do. hardwood floors, they wreck everything. They do. I, I love them. But yeah, like, wait, <laughs> don't waste your money because you're going to end up redoing it again. It's so true. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So I kind of bring the mom... Yeah. perspective too. And they, I think they appreciate that because now talking about the mom perspective, yeah. you know, with everything that you have going on, Jackie, yeah, real estate, successful show that you're doing, how did you balance or do you balance that being the mother of three kids? It's, um, you know, it, it's challenging, but it's getting easier now, now that they're older and a little more independent. You know, my daughter, my youngest, she's uh, 16. She's a junior. She'll be driving soon, thank God. Right. Um, Liberating, I isn't I, it? Oh, my God. It's, <laughs> it's like it's the best. Um, it's been, you know, for the past eight years, it was challenging, especially working the schedule that, like, working the weekends, going out, showing houses, mm -hmm. and trying to manage, you know, being available for them, and then you know, being available for my clients and, right. and even like work in the evenings too. I would do a lot of showings at night. Um, but you know, my husband's super supportive and, you know, he was available to, you know, to be in charge and all that. And my oldest son, when he was still living at home, you know, he was very helpful too. Um, now were you working prior to coming into real estate? Um, I was a stay at home mom for okay. a while. Um, and then I would, but prior to that, I, a lot of my work was in client services. So right. it it was just kind of a natural thing to walk into real estate because sure. I was, I, I loved it. I enjoyed working with customers or clients and the real estate, it's kind of in my background. My dad was a flipper. He was a contractor, but he flipped homes. He owned um, a couple of mobile home parks. Mm -hmm. um, he owned apartment buildings. So he was an investor. So I was, you know, very familiar with the, with real estate for Right. Like my whole life growing up with him. Well, so. you know, it's a lot. And I, I commend you for being able to, you know, eight years ago, going to real estate because it's hard for the household, right? Because you take care of everything. Mm -hmm. So you're taking care of everything. You got, you have the kids. And then there's a balance with making sure you're there for the kids. I yeah. know they're all in like band and different things yep. like that. Yeah. So you have their activities. Plus you get your real estate career. Plus yep. all these other things that you're doing. It's, it's, it's not easy. No, it's, it's not. And but you know what? I I enjoy what I do and I make time for it because especially, you know, with, with them being in band, you know, as I said before, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a, a big time band mom and I'm like, I, I say it loud and proud. Like yeah. I just, I, I love our marching band. I love our music program. We are like very, very involved and we don't get those years back. Right. So that's why it's important to me that I make the time for that and be available like every summer um, the kids have marching band camp the first week of August. Like that's our, we, it's blocked out. And, and my, every all my friends know, I'm like, marching band has officially started uh -huh. once marching band camp starts and you won't hear from me until November. 
Like that's just how it is. <laughs> and they're like, okay, <laughs> like crazy band mom. You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Give it to them straight. I do. But they, but they just know. Yeah. They know. And it's funny. My friends will sometimes text me and they're like, hey, we're going to go to an Oktoberfest. Do you want to come? I'm like, sorry, we got a marching band competition. They're like, oh, they're like, when's it over? You know? <laughs> and they travel around. They do. Tour, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. We have. I would say our band is, uh, they're, they're flipping awesome. And I love the kids, uh, all the kids in the group. It's just been, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, doing it for nine years. Yeah. So it's been, yeah, it's very enjoyable. And, and I love the parents too. So, and oh, that's great. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's, but again, working real estate around that can be challenging at times. But oh, sure. We make it happen. Sure, that's great. My wife was in the band. She's from West Milford originally. Oh, get out. Yeah. Yeah, they it, have a great program. Yes, they had a, a great, great program band. Up there. Oh, my God. They have a great marching band. Yeah, they went all sorts of cool places yeah. to, to compete. That's one thing I'll say about Jersey, man. Yeah. They're really into their marching bands here. And they're, it's, it's like, especially North Jersey yeah. and even parts of South Jersey, too. We, we went to a competition in Thomas River in October. And oh my God, some of these bands are just insane. Like the stuff that they <laughs> it's like do. Like professional stuff. It really yeah. is. It really is. And it's, and the bands are some of them are huge. Like our band isn't that big, but some of the some of them around the state. They like you know have over a hundred and fifty kids in the band. It's right. just oh, it's crazy. But we love it. Yeah, love and it. it's actually really is amazing how you can pull all that together and make it sound so good. Oh, I know. We got one hundred fifty. Teenagers, I know, right? I know, it's like and, herding cats, you would think, but they all oh my co- God. cohesive unit. Well, like I told you, our band director, he's very disciplined, and yeah. and like as much as my kids complained about how he was like a stickler on time, and you know, you got to be here to be early is to be on time. Yeah. As much as they complain, I'm like, these are life skills that man is teaching you, so yeah. you will thank him one day. And sure enough, they it stuck with them. Uh, so, that's why, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Hey, you're shifting back into real estate. Where do you think this market's going this year? I think it's going to be stagnant. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I don't see much happening mm-hmm. um, because of, the, even if the rates come down to 5.5%, the way the economy is right now, I still think people are going to be apprehensive to to list. Right. To list and, you know, the, it, and we're going to still have the bidding wars because of the inventory. I just think it's going to yeah. be stagnant. I think there is an underlying fear of some type of a recession coming down the pike. I mean, you you have yeah. the so the gross domestic product last quarter was up two point six percent, which was great, and jobs are still there. Yeah, but you know when from what I read, it's just they're waiting for something to happen. Like yeah. there's still uncertainty. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, we've been saying this for since last year. We're waiting for a recession. Yeah. Okay. So where, you know, I'm looking at my watch. Where, where is it? <laughs> like, did it happen? Did Maybe it happen? It Maybe it happened. It was just, we blinked in it. And now, exactly. oh, look, we're recovering. Like, <laughs> like what we were yeah. talking about Monday night on the yeah. live stream, how now some, pl- some experts are saying, oh, the housing market's starting to recover. Right. From what? Right. Like, it, like, it, <laughs> like oh, oh, that's right. We had a housing recession and. For three months. For three months. Right. Thank you. Like. And we're, we're recovering from that. So they're making it sound like, yeah, we did have a, a 2008. And look, we're coming back now. We're recovering. N- no. <laughs> Glad we made it through it. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, man, that was brutal. But mm. no, it, it's, it, again, see, clickbait. That's what people, you yeah. know, people are putting all that stuff out there. The headlines like, oh, look, the housing market's recovering. You know yeah. what? If you're not going to listen to people that are giving it to you straight, then don't listen to anybody. Yeah. You know, put the blinders on and just focus on what you have to do. Yes. Like from a consumer standpoint, from an agent standpoint, mortgage standpoint, business standpoint. Yep. What do I got to accomplish? Right. And what am I going after this year? And just don't listen to the outside noise. I know. That's and that's what I tell my clients too. And you know, a lot of them have the the first timers have their have their parents. Um, chirping in their ear yeah. about like, oh, I don't know if you should be buying a house and it's so expensive and right. like just, they don't know. They don't understand what they it's don't. like right now. They they really don't. No. And, um, you know, I, I get, I get a little, I guess people get annoyed with me when I'm honest about that, but it's like, look, you can't have the outside influences tell you what to do and don't, don't let them instill that fear in you. There's, you right. know, you, you get talk to the experts like you and I. Yep. 
So you know, and understand the full picture of what you're doing, what you're buying, the resaleability of it. Right. Understand your tax benefits. Yes. If you're a first time home buyer, yeah. Like you got to, you have to know these things so you can make an educated decision as to what's right for you. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. But I find you now some millennials. I I have a friend. She's 39, 38. You know, she's 38. She doesn't want to buy a house because mm-hmm. she watched what her parents went through yeah. in the in the crash in 08. Right. So they, you know, um, so she's like, I- I'm not, I'm never going to buy a house because I don't want to lose all that money. And right. I'm like, but you, you don't understand. Like, we're not going to see that again. Right. And I said, look, I bought my house 10 years ago and it's appreciated a lot. Will you time that well? I did. <laughs> 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 but it's just ironic. It's just, oh, you mean right? timing? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it did. We timed it very well. We bought it in 2012. Yep. Right at the end of when you know yeah. when things are starting to come back. Right. Right. And um, yeah. Now we yeah we're doing very well on it now. Yeah. So yeah, we can we can make a, a good chunk of money and and as I, t- I explained that to her. Right. Um. You, yeah. You know you're spot on though with that that. Great recession we saw that had never happened before. Not right. like that in such a short period of time. Yeah. Odds of seeing it again, very, very, very remote. Anytime soon, maybe 30 years from now, you're seeing something like that. Yeah. But it's not in this upcoming housing market. Unless the job market crashes. Like, unless True. we see that. That's yeah. the only, but, and I always have to put that disclaimer in there, you yeah. know, unless something happens where the economy blows up and, right. the, and the job market crashes. But, doesn't look like that's happening. No, it's just like the interest rates. People looking for people got brainwashed by the three percent interest rate. Oh God! And not understanding the fact that okay, it's a one-time anomaly due to a global pandemic that's yeah, never hasn't happened since the Spanish flu in the early 1900s. Right. And right. that's what forced the rates down. They're not going to go back down that low unless yeah. something major were to were to happen. I I love when people comment on my channel and they're like, oh, "I'm just waiting for prices to come back down." I'm like, "Keep waiting." Like, or you, or you can buy real estate and wait, you right. know, you can't wait to buy a house because the prices are just going to go up. I mean, people still have this thought that their prices yeah. are going to crash. Couldn't agree with you more. And yeah. I hear it on the interest rate standpoint too. Well, yeah. we want, we're waiting for rates to come down. Now you're going to have some fluctuation, but you're just not going to see the market crash unless yeah. something significantly happens. And to your term mm-hmm. with the clickbait, right? I see the interest rates all the time. So I get phone calls saying, Hey, Greg, I saw that interest rates plummeted today. Like, well, what it doesn't factor in was how much they went up two weeks ago, right? So they went right. up and they came down. So now we're, we were at where we're at. They're not at 3% yet. Uh, yeah. You're, I will call you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <If that happens. laughs> but it just doesn't, it's not realistic. No, it's not. And uh, I think people need to get on board with that and get real. Right. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. So. So your show's fantastic. Thank you. It's fantastic. Thank you. How would somebody tune into it, Jackie? So um, I'm under the handle. It's called Jackie Baker Sells NJ on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, like like I said, I've kind of named it now your dose of real estate reality. So I've been constantly going back and forth, like, should I change the YouTube handle to that now? So yeah, yeah. but it, you could find me under uh, Jackie Baker Sells NJ. Uh, that's that's fantastic. If anyone needs you for their real estate needs, get in touch with you the same way. Yeah, um, my all my contact information is out there on that on my channel, my email, uh, phone number, email, and text um, is probably the best way to get a hold of me. So, and yeah. would you be kind enough to give it to us one more time? Sure, my channel, please. Yeah, it's Jackie Baker sells NJ. It was so great having you on the show today, So awesome to be here. It's so much fun. Oh, this is great. This is great. So Jackie Baker, everyone. Oh, thank you so Uh, much. Thanks for taking the time. So much fun. It was great. And I want to thank everybody out there for listening today. I'm Greg Wareham. This is Jackie Baker with Your Mortgage Process. Look forward to catching up with you next week. Bye, guys. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Your Mortgage Process, hosted by Greg Wareham. Produced by Greg Wareham and Nick Pavise at The Social Rift and executively produced by The Social Rift. Thank you again for tuning in and we look forward to catching up with you next week.